Coming up on the show, could this Southwest teenager emerge as the next EPL star? We catch up with WA's New Zealand international Storm Brew and we preview the titanic battle between Bayswater and Stirling for this week's Courage Cup final. Hello again, welcome to Football 360. You are watching Australia's best online football show. Well, the World Cup may be over, but the incredible football journey for one WA teenager has only just begun. At only 17, Callum Richardson's football world is literally at his feet. Obviously, I started here at Australind when I was about six, and I played here for all my junior years until I was about under 12s. And then I moved on to Southwest Phoenix for a few years. After that, I, I moved into the NTC under Kenny Lowe. The couple of years that I was under, under him, I improved by an absolute mile. And also other people such as Kenny Weston uh, in the state team under 15s, he's another big influence. I had to, to travel uh, from Bunbury to Perth three times a week. It was difficult for me and mum and dad because obviously they had to drive me so I didn't have my license then. Mum and dad are, are a massive impact on my life. I don't think I would be anywhere near here if it wasn't for them so I am really, really grateful for them. I've always wanted to become a uh, professional footballer so yeah that's where it really all started. I've been at Burnley uh, for two seasons now. I've been across there about 18 months till now. I was on a uh, two-year scholarship uh, with the youth team and then I've just recently been offered uh, a year's professional contract. Obviously I was very happy because that's what I've been working towards, uh, that was my main goal. I was absolutely stoked but I know that the uh, hard work doesn't stop there. It's been the best footballing experience so far that I've had. Obviously because I'm training every day, I could have games twice a week. The level over there is really good and the facilities are really good so I really enjoy it. Now that we're in the Premier League, a lot's changed but it'll, a lot for the better. It's going to be a lot more difficult for everybody in the club because of the standard of the Premier League but for me it will be good because I'll be in and around the first team playing with the reserves, the under 21s. I think my ultimate goal would obviously be to play first team. It's probably a long term goal, I mean whatever happens happens but probably just to play the best football that I can. Well, this weekend we'll lay the perfect backdrop to another classic encounter for the Courage Cup final. Sterling take on Bayswater in the grand final of the Courage Cup. It's a replay of last year's league final between both teams. Now, Bayswater were victorious on that day and no doubt Sterling will be looking for revenge. Gary, a big, big week in store. Saturday is the game day. As I mentioned, you'll be looking for revenge after last year's loss. You must be pretty bitter after that, uh, that grand final last year. Bitter's not the, not the correct word. Um, look, I think it was a, a good tussle between two very good teams last year. Um, young Gareth and Glynn put a great goal for us, but Bayswater, as they do, they come back, they show good character and 1-2-1 one, one, one in the end. We obviously want to win the game, um, and we want to get some cups on the honours list this year. Luck played no part in our path through to the final. I thought, thought we thoroughly deserve it. Um, we're up against one of the best teams in the league now next week. Um, and we'll go into it full of confidence and hopefully we'll come out the other side with a positive result. Whilst they've got strength running through their team, I think we also share that strength. And um, we're going to the game full of confidence next week. Next month, you take on the might of the Brisbane Raw uh, in the FFA Cup first round at home. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, privately, before the draw came out, Brisbane Raw was a team that I wanted to play. As, as we're talking pre-interview, you know, you can go and play one of the other state league sides on the other side of the country. Um, and if you get knocked out, you get nothing from it. But to play Brisbane Raw, it give the club great publicity, it bring a bit of money into the club. Um, I've been involved in those FA Cup games back in England, playing for non-league teams against league teams. And I can tell you one thing, they're great for the community, they're great for the supporters, um, and the players will absolutely love it. Well, we wish you both uh, good luck in this weekend's Courage Cup final and the FFA Cup. It's time now to hear from Chris Quinn, the head coach of Bayswater City, and uh, you must be pretty tired of winning every trophy on there is to, to get at the moment. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, we're going all right, and I, I know it's cliched, but it's a game at a time, and we're looking forward to it. Every game for us this year has been a cup final because everyone comes here and wants to roll us, so the boys are battle-hardened, they're ready, and, and we can't wait for, for what promises to be a great game. Looking ahead, the FA Cup, Sterling have got the Raw, 
you've landed a Melbourne victory. Uh, two tantalising matches back to back next month. Could you have asked for a, a better first round opponent? No, like Gary mentioned, I think we both secretly wanted you know a big a big team. That's the whole reason you're in it. We've both been part of the underdog show in the FA Cup in the UK, and it's it's always great to get the big crowded big crowd at a, a local ground and it, it does put you know, MPLWA onto the map and I think people will get a pleasant surprise by what we have got on offer here you know the, the eastern seaboard because of its proximity to each major city you know we don't really get the exposure that we, I, I think we rightly deserve so when people do get the, the chance to see some of your Marilundas, your Macheskis, your Doyles or whatever running out there it's um it's exciting for, for the game because they are good players good players on merit and I think you know a few of them should possibly be playing at the next level as well. Well, he may have been born in South Africa and plays for New Zealand, but there's no question where Storm Roo's youth career began, right here in Perth's northern suburbs. We caught up with him to explore his football journey. It's been an incredible 18 months or so for you. How do you reflect on that period? Yeah, it's been crazy, um, you know, basically going from a youth team contract to all of a sudden, you know, playing at an under-20 World Cup and uh, getting a pro contract from there at the Mariners. You know, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been an unreal ride, but... Uh, yeah, but very good. So you've also had uh, senior international debut in, in that time. Is there three internationals now? I came at a time where I think a lot of New Zealand players were retiring, getting a bit old, and uh, now a lot of young players have come through. So it's a good time to be part of the squad. You know, um, exciting future ahead, I reckon. How was your debut? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was hard. You know, we just came off a spanking from 5 1 from Mexico. It was back in Wellington on the return leg, and uh, yeah, they gave us another spanking, and I reckon 4-2. Uh, but no, it was an unreal experience, you know, playing in front of a massive crowd and against quality opposition like that. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Came back here at Sorrento, uh, obviously having been a, a nominee in the Young Player of the Year last year. How does it feel to know that your performances now are putting something back into a junior club that obviously you played for? Obviously, coming over here, this is my first club played at, and you know they've done a lot for me. Um, through my junior years and, and it's great to give something back to them um, and hopefully hopefully they can put good use to it and you know help help other kids come through. How's life at the Mariners? Yeah it's great football wise um, you know I don't think there's a better club in the A-League um, they look after the young boys and you know you can see from uh, from a lot of, the, a lot of the boys coming through they go over to Europe and onto onto better things so that's exciting for me um, and you know it's a good place to live as well it's really relaxed and, and chilled out so it's, it's good for a footballer. Football 360 would like to honour one of the stalwarts of WA soccer. Former Inglewood United player, coach and president Siggy Kramer passed away last week after serving the game for more than 60 years. The club this week paid tribute to his legacy, a man certainly larger than life. This ground, this club would be nothing without Ziggy. So it was, it was the least we could do was have a, a match between Glory, who needed a hit out, and Inglewood, which, which was Ziggy's life, and uh, it's his memory tonight. And really, when you think about Inglewood, Inglewood Kiev didn't have what the Greek clubs, the Italian clubs, the Macedonian clubs, massive support base and sponsorship base. He did it really on his own, just beg, borrowing, stealing what he had to do. And, and it's a testament to what we have here today. And that wraps up another exciting and busy Football 360. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again in a few weeks. Don't forget this weekend, Macedonia Park for all the Coolridge Cup finals action. We hope to see you there. Until next time, it's bye for now.